Okay, hi everyone. My name is Christopher Wendells. I head up product here at YY. Now this webinar will cover how to attribute website or app traffic to TV advertising. Or in other words, how much web traffic actually happens as a result of my TV commercials. We are going to do a, about a 30 minute presentation. Um, we're going to pack in some time for Q&A at the end. There are a decent number of participants today, so we have everyone on mute as there would otherwise be too much noise. But do feel free to post any questions um, or in the chat, and I will address these at the end of the presentation. Also, to let you know, after the presentation is, is done, after the webinar, we will also make the deck available to you guys. So what we will cover today, I'm going to talk a little bit about TV analytics in general, how the TV attribution actually works, and why you should be doing it. I will then present our TV analytics dashboard and finish off with our case studies. So just a few numbers here to get us started. Almost everyone uses their second screen device such as a mobile phone, tablet, or laptop while watching TV. And one in three viewers visits the advertiser's website after seeing the ad on TV. In essence, there's been this massive shift in viewer behavior. So we're multitasking in parallel, resulting in many viewers immediately engaging with the brands. So what happens due to this change in behavior? We can see spikes in website traffic immediately after an error. We see that 80% come within the first 90 seconds. So it's basically this really short burst, and that quickly dies down again. And this is the basic concept of how TV attribution works. So we start off by taking the website traffic. Then we add the airing times to that. And when you marry the traffic data with the airing time, uh, you can immediately see, when you plot it on a graph, you can immediately see that orange shaded area. And the attribution model automatically takes care of that and calculates the uplift um, using algorithms. Now, while that concept is quite simple, the devil really is in the details when it comes to TV attribution. So let's take this step by step. First off, we have the traffic tracking. Time resolution is a really important factor here, so the second by second data, because once we aggregate that to minute or hourly levels, we just don't get enough uh, good data. We don't get the resolution we need. So remember that 80% of that uplift traffic happens within the first 90 seconds. We also need to understand the traffic sources to determine what is TV relevant traffic. So direct or organic or paid searches, those are all good sources of TV traffic. We want to make sure that the user's geolocation lines up with the broadcast area of the TV show um, or the channel uh, where we have the airing. Secondly, we need exact airing times. So in the example here, we have a media plan that says we want to air at 941, but we have an actual airing happen at 937. So that's four minutes off, and we miss the entire uplift uh, if we've gone off the media plan. So the exact airing times are really important. Then we need that attribution model. Uh, there are a couple of things with the attribution model that are really important. So we need a variable baseline. The reason for this is that traffic is stable. It fluctuates, and it varies a lot during the day. So early in the morning, you'll have low traffic, generally speaking. Uh, that will rise throughout the day, and depending on your vertical, uh, it will then die down uh, as the evening progresses and people go, back, uh, go to bed. We also need a variable attribution time. So think of that when you have the beginning of a commercial break and there's an add-on. People are still bored, distracted, they want to kill some time while the commercial break is on. But at the end of a commercial break, 
users are not keen to visit the websites because the content that they were actually watching, the TV show that they were engaged in, is back on the air. So they're going to go back to that. So we have this variable attribution time uh, that we need to consider. And then we also need to handle overlapping spots. What do I mean by overlapping spots? So we have one airing um, on one channel and then two minutes later on a completely different channel we have the same ad or post variant of that TV creative air. We need, to, we need to understand how to deal that, how to deal with that problem. So how do we solve these things at YY? Well, for the traffic tracking, we use our own tracking solution to collect the original first party data. We get the exact airing times by using our own real-time TV ad detection solution. So we determine the exact airing time by monitoring the live linear TV signal for the app. And that system is up and running 24-7. Third, we have our own attribution model. We use variable baselines. We have variable attribution times. And we have different uh, mechanisms for dealing with the overlapping spots. For example, channel weights looking at the reach and importance of channels. Now we built this model in the last couple of years. We're constantly improving it based on our experience and we also continue to do so. So how does this benefit me? Well, more than likely, at least one of these questions is going to be on your mind. Now, these are just a few examples, um, but let me show you what you can do with our TV analytics dashboard. So I'm just going to jump over to the live version. Yep, there we go. And make sure that's loaded. Excellent. So this is the YYTV Analytics dashboard. Uh, nice, simple, straightforward layout. Um, starting at the top, you have the ability to select your campaigns uh, when you're running different campaigns to keep track of them. In this case, we only have the one campaign. Um, also important would be to select uh, the dates that we're interested in. In this case, let's just look at the month of October. And this would be the first thing that you would see logging in to the dashboard. So we have very high level view up here. We got the number of airings that have aired in the selected time frame for the campaign that we have selected the total net cost for this campaign, the visit uplift that has been generated, and also the total number of visits attributed to TV. And following on that, we also have uh, the conversion that we are currently displaying. So we have the ability here to select uh, different conversions for analytics and the reports. Let's take uh, purchase orders. It's always interesting to see you know, where the money's coming in. And that's pretty much the tool um, at the very high level. Looking further down, we have the ability to select between different reporting views. So this is the TV airings report, where we have each individual airing displayed. So I can see every single airing, when it aired, um, on what TV channel it aired, what was the TV creative that we detected, and then we start getting into the actual numbers. So what was the visit uplift uh, in terms of so how many visits did we attribute to TV um, following that airing? And then we can also see that as a relative number depending on uh, what the baseline traffic was. Uh, at that point in the area. We also have conversion information, so the revenue that we got in for conversions from those TV users, the net cost for the airing based off of the visit uplift, we also get a net cost per visit so that we can see how our channels are performing and the return on ad spend that that generated um, directly. 
Now, looking at it in this view is is great if we're just trying to see, okay, did we air that spot, or you know, what was the what was the impact of, of that one airing? Generally, the really interesting insights that we can gain come from the aggregate reports. So, starting off, for example, with the TV channels, we can see here that for this campaign, we only aired on these five channels. So it's uh, just an example mix, so ABC, ESPN, Fox, Sci-Fi, and VH1, all of this only ran on the, um, uh, generally on the, uh, on the East Coast. And we can see first off the, the airing distribution, so VH1 had the most airings, um, whereas we had less on, uh, on Fox and Sci-Fi. We can see the visit uplift, uh, the relative visit uplift is generated, and we can also see the uh, purchase order uplift. So, how many, what was the increase in, in conversions that we generated? Now, looking at these numbers, we can definitely say that VH1 isn't performing as well as many of the other channels. But when we look a little bit closer, when we go look into the sort of the details, what we can see here is that um, when we look at the, the cost per visit that we're actually paying, like what is it, what is the impact, or uh, even the, the return on ad spend, we can see that Fox, that is doing pretty well in terms of a visit uplift, definitely uh, within the benchmark, better than the benchmark here of, of 18%. Uh, the purchase order uplift to 27% is also better than the, the average that we're getting for this campaign. But in terms of what we're paying for those airings, uh, we're just not seeing that it's, that it's the best performer anymore. So this gives us insight into what channels are, uh, are working best. So we can do the same thing for our TV creatives. So here again, we have a 15 second variant and a 30 second variant, obviously, the 15 second variant because it is <clears throat> it has a lower uh, runtime uh, we may generally be paying less for that because we're taking out uh, less airtime but as we can see uh, for the two 30 second spots we're still getting um, a better performance out of the 30 second spot weekday basically the same thing again uh, just broken down by uh, by day of the week so Sunday through Saturday, and again, we also have the hourly reports that give us that type of insight um, based on the time of day. Again, interesting to see what day parts work well, where are we getting uh, you know, good engagement, comparing that to the site benchmark numbers, we're generally seeing pretty good performance uh, here around the, the midday and also the early afternoon. Um, another couple of things that I'd like to show you um, in the dashboard, sort of uh, interesting things that we have is uh, the conversions overview report. So instead of looking at the reports individually and looking at what, what information is, uh, is interesting to, to me in this campaign, we can look at the, the overall conversion values we can see here that we have a uh, total number of conversions um, attributed to TV, what the uplift percentage was, what was the average order value for the purchase orders or a basket size. Um, interesting to note is that the value uplift um, here is greater than the actual conversion uplift. So whenever we have dynamic order values, um, when there's a discrepancy there, we can see that our TV users are either purchasing more expensive goods or have a higher basket value compared to the non-TV um, the non -TV visitors. Another thing I'd also like to highlight, uh, looking back at, the, um, at our reports, is you have the ability to export all this data. So we have an export functionality. We generate a CSV report. Uh, we select the dates that we're interested in the campaign. Uh, enter an email address to make sure that the uh, that we get notified once it's ready for a download, and then we can download a report uh, 
with all the information that we have collected um, for the airings. So um, that was the dashboard. Now jumping back to the presentation. There we go. And there is our presentation. Okay, so generally speaking, why should you choose YY? So in our opinion, there are three reasons. First, our system provides real-time ad recognitions, which allows you to optimize your TV campaign in real time. As a side note, you don't have to wait weeks for the post airing logs. There's no need to, for a manual upload. I mean, everything is automated. So this makes our system hassle-free. Second, we probably provide the most integrations in the industry. For example, if you're interested in app attribution, we have integrations with all the major players. If you want the data in your web analytics tool, we integrate with all the major players there also. If, you don't, if we don't have an integration for your existing tools, we provide a customizable API, which is already in use by many of the large ad agencies. Uh, essentially, the integration makes your life easier by giving you the insights where you need them. Third, we really pride ourselves on the technical capabilities of our real-time detections and the sophistication of our attribution algorithm. As I pointed out earlier, the devil really is in the details. And in the end, whatever system you decide to use needs to handle each and every one of those details. OK, so that all sounded nice. Uh, but let's take a look at some real customer data. So this uh, is the first of the case studies I'll be presenting. It was done with a job portal and uh, called Expert Here. We actually met them by chance at a conference. And they were telling us about their first ever TV campaign. And we got to talking about how they would track it. And then they said, well, whenever the spot was supposed to air, they would look at the real-time dashboard in Google Analytics and then try to sort of get a, get a gut impression if it was doing well or not. Um, we told them that we could set up TV analytics within a day and give them like the full view of the direct impact on their registrations. So we got that set up and you can see two findings here. The first is that the afternoon day part performed the best, even though the conversion uplift was not the highest. Uh, but the cost per conversion was the lowest. And the other thing is that channels two and three, which were news channels, uh, performed by far the best. Now, this boils down, uh, essentially, to reaching your audience in the right mindset. So even though the same audience was targeted over all of these areas, people did not seem to want to take action on their careers while well, they were kicking back on the couch in the evening, um, watching TV, uh, or were you know, stressed early in the morning to head out to work, uh, stuff like that. So it, it really is. Uh, about reaching your target audience, uh, not only just reaching your target audience, but also reaching them when it's, when it's appropriate for them to take the action you want them to take. And by just concentrating their TV budget on the best performing day part and the TV channels, this client had an optimization potential of a factor of 20 plus. Now, we're not talking 10 to 20 percent savings. We're talking about getting 20 times more out of your TV campaigns. Um, another client we worked with was Seat, part of the uh, Volkswagen Group. They presented their latest Seat Leon model. Typically, this would be a branding client, but one, they also wanted to understand how TV impacts their website activity. Again, there were two major findings. So one, the daytime television works really well in terms of engagement, and late night, not at all. So the learning here was to definitely look beyond prime time. Now, even if you reach your desired target audience, that does not mean 
they'll engage the same way across different shows. So secondly, in this case, um, it was the genre crime shows were part of the media plan as they were a really good fit with a target audience. So from a branding perspective, it was very efficient to book these shows, but it just didn't result in any engagement. So CIA have decided that moving forward new campaigns, they're going to look at the, the branding and GRP goals as a, as a primary goal, but then secondarily they'll look at the engagement goal. So given similar GRPs across genres, they will choose the genre with the better engagement. The next case um, was a campaign we did with Coca-Cola. This ran in Turkey. So the idea was the Turkish soccer fans could show support for their teams by engaging online. Now this was done by entering the bottle cap code to make a donation for a team of the, the customer's choice. The question that we asked us was, is, as Coca-Cola is very branding oriented, could we identify TV genres that had a similar impact in terms of branding and then focus on the genre with a better performance? To visualize the results, we put together this chart. So on the x-axis, we have the cost per donation, where left-hand side is low performance, so it was expensive high performance uh, was a, a good cost per donation. <clears throat> On the y-axis we have the number of TV airings while the size of the bubble indicates the number of the total donations. So on the far hand right we can see we have the best performing genres uh, denoted 9 and 10 and we recommended uh, the client to increase the number of airings as we had a, a low number of airings but we had really good performance. And on the far left hand side where we had low performance, uh, genres two and three were selected for branding reasons so they couldn't be cut right off because that was the, the primary goal. But when we took a deeper look we saw that the low performance came mainly from the primetime airings whereas the non-primetime airings actually performed reasonably well uh, which led us to recommend a shift toward other airing times. So again, we see here the that need to look uh, to look beyond uh, those high GRPs and that prime time uh, segment. The next case study, uh, or the final case study I want to present today, is a case study with an online retailer. So we saw a significant difference in performance between channels. There's a 70% variation in the channels and a 36% variation in the day parts. The total optimization potential was between 15 and 30%. As a rule of thumb, we generally say that at least 20% improvement should be possible. In this case, the TV campaign was booked through a direct response TV agency meaning that a lot of optimization had already been done in the planning stage. And as you've seen in the other examples, much higher performance improvements can be achieved. Okay, before I uh, come to a close of the presentation and jumping into the Q&A part, I wanted to point out three things we feel that you guys should keep in mind based on our experience. So firstly, without exact airing times and the accurate traffic data, no reliable attribution is possible. So aside from incorrect airing times, causing you to entirely miss the uplift, most analytics tools will only provide a resolution of one hour for the aggregate reports. This means that if you average like 10 airings during prime time, you have no way of knowing which spots perform well. Uh, secondly, when utilizing simple models, even with accurate data, you run into problems of overlapping spots. One good example we had was a client running hundreds of airings on a small niche channel and only two or three a day on the major network. Now the analysis that the client already had told them that the airings on the major network were not performing well, they were very expensive, whereas 
when we ran our analysis, we were able to show them that, in fact, those airings were the very best performing spots in driving the engagement. And they just completely missed that because of the overlap. And thirdly and lastly, optimizing is key. So we had an uh, e-commerce retailer and they were running seven different product deals where they ran a different TV creative for each product deal. And the best performing creative produced twice the number of orders compared to the lowest performing ad. So they were able to optimize just by rotating through uh, the creatives that they had already uh, booked into the slots. Now I'm happy to take a couple of your guys' questions. Just see here what we've had come in. Okay, so we have uh, one question here that came in. If I can explain the uh, purchase all or the purchase order dollars versus the total net cost uh, when I was going through the dashboard. Yeah, so the purchase order uh, values is the dynamic value assigned to the conversion. So we generally have three different conversion types, um, either just the conversion goal with no value, sort of like a, a newsletter sign up. Um, and we have uh, conversion values uh, that are either static or, or dynamic. So when someone makes a purchase, um, say, you know, we have an e-commerce player, someone selling um, a TV, that's worth $1,000, and then we have them selling batteries worth $10. So depending on what the basket size is, that's the, uh, that is the purchase order value coming in versus the net cost, that would be the net cost of the uh, of the TV area, so we can actually see a direct return on ad spend um, to get an idea, again, a feel for how much revenue are we driving with our with our TV ads. Um, another question uh, was if that was data from a real client. So no, the data was not from a real client. That was um, one of our demo accounts um, because we do not share. Um, our client data other than uh, in prearranged forms as we did with the case studies here. Okay, and then another question. If we can offer this on local spot buys or just nationals? So <clears throat> we currently focus mainly on national advertising. We can attribute on local DMA level, but for that we need the post airing report. So this works um, exactly in the same way, in the same way. The only limitation being the delay with which you could provide us with the post airing logs. So for real time detection, will we provide the data as soon as we have it? Uh, that is uh, mainly national advertising, some local coverage available. Um, but please do get in touch with us um, if you have any uh, any specific channels in mind. Um, we're always happy to, to take a look at that. Uh, right, another question here. Can we get the data into our in-house business intelligence tool? So yes, you can always export all the data um, through the CSV exporter, and that should be compatible with almost any tool. Um, if you have, uh, if you're, you know, more technically, uh, uh, but looking for a more technical solution, we also offer an API, which we can customize a little bit according to your needs, and that would mean that the data is automatically transferred to your tool. And another question here, so what does a setup time require? Basically, the setup time is limited to as fast as you can send us the TV commercials and then get the YY tracking code on your website. Um, we've done it, the fastest I think is within a day, so based on our experience, it takes an average of a week until the tracking code is implemented um, because, you know, identifying who, who can publish the code, uh, is it the client directly, is there an agency involved, and so forth. But it's, if everything runs smoothly, it's, it's really fast. Can we attribute app installs? We use the Adjust Mobile Attribution Platform. Okay, yes. We can either use the, um, 
the, the YY Mobile SDK. So we do have um, uh, tracking libraries for iOS and Android. Or you can use an integration module from one of our partners. Adjust is one of our partners. Um, within Adjust, you just need to add the integration module to your account and then enter the YY customer ID uh, we will provide you with, and you're all set. Okay, so <laughs> fun question uh, uh, from an, uh, an agency here. Uh, can we white label this product? So yes, that is absolutely doable. Send me an email and we'll get in touch on how to do that in more detail. Okay, probably time for just uh, maybe one or two more questions here. So how do we store the user data and are we compliant with privacy laws? So YY operates in compliance with privacy and data protection laws. We do not collect any personally identifiable information. Uh, the, data is the data collected is only accessible to the client and YY staff with a valid business reason for accessing that data. So our, our setup is very similar to other analytics solutions like Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, for example. Um, uh, also, since we're, we're talking about the, the TV space, like we do not listen into people's TV sets or listen to the mobile devices. Like our real-time detection system is something that, that runs in the back end um, in, uh, in our server hosting sites. Um, we get the wherever we're able to get the live feed um, from the from the broadcasters and from the networks, and we use that together with the with the collected website traffic data, um, where again we, we don't have any personal identifiable information, um, and we use that for our attribution model in order to calculate the uplift. So there, there shouldn't be any privacy concerns um, whatsoever. Uh, another, maybe just one last question, because uh, it's, it's a really good question. So do I need to add watermarks to my commercials? So no, we use audio fingerprinting, uh, which based on our experience is very, very easy to set up um, and very robust regarding the detection. Um, so you just send us your commercials and then we just take care of the rest. Um, okay, uh, last question uh, maybe here regarding the, the, what the product costs. Uh, it depends on the suite of products and integrations that you choose. And, and it also depends on the length of your commitment. So the best thing would be to reach out uh, either to a sales contact or just send me an email and I'll make sure to put you guys in touch. Um, right, okay, I'm afraid that's all the questions we have time for today. Thank you so much for taking the time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, any follow-up, um, send me an email. Uh, we will also be sending out the deck after the, the webinar. Um, so do reach out to us if you have any more questions, and if I didn't answer your question today, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but we will follow up with you. All right, so thank you once again, and uh, have a good one.